Hi everyone, my name is Cara Noble. I am the National Relationship Manager for the Cancer Association. And I'm so proud to be hosting this webinar today on World Ostomy Day. I think it's really about time that we do more for stoma patients and have more opportunities for education and learning and what better day than today. Um, and I think one of the best parts about today is that we have a fantastic lineup for you. We have some of the best guys in the industry with years of experience um, and speciality that are here today to share. And I, I really feel, and on behalf of the patients as well, we really need more accessibility to information and to professionals that can really help people navigate their stoma journey. And we know that that is on a whole, a whole other level of different challenges um, and different phases of journeys from, for example, just finding out you have a stoma, initially coping with that, trying to educate your family members as a family together, trying to navigate this new change in your life and how you see your life going forward. And it's not just for a couple of months or for a while. It is a lifelong change. And cancer is so passionate about the work that we do do with stoma patients. And we're so excited to share more about that with you later today. I decided to thank all of our guest speakers today for their time and also for you. We are so excited to have a variety of healthcare professionals, patients, family members, um, stoma patients that are here that have no relation to cancer as well. Uh, we are just welcoming all of you a very warm well welcome to uh, the session today. And thank you so much for joining us. We know Saturdays are quite busy with family time and we are so excited that at the moment, I'm actually just trying to see my screen, how many participants we have at the moment. I'll share that with you now. Wow. So we are on 36 participants, but we do actually have quite a few more that registered. We had just under 100 that registered. So we're hoping now that people will start joining in slowly, but I think I'll give us maybe one more minute or so to see if we have any more people joining. But I think something that's really important about today is that people are coming together and people do need more information. People do need more education. And I'm just really grateful that people are taking the time to learn more and to have opportunity to access some really fantastic information from really some of the leaders in the field in the stoma industry. So I think I'm going to start then. I'm really lucky to have a really great panel. So it's, it's actually not much work for me. Um, I'm really grateful just to be <laughs> introducing these fantastic professionals. I'm going to first introduce you to Sister Monica Frank. She actually did her nursing training at UJ and Helen, and Helen Joseph Hospital and her pediatric training at Red Cross. Um, she also did her stomal therapy training at Kutiskir and Red Cross Hospital and is now appointed as coloplast um, uh, full-time as a stoma therapist in the private sector. She has years and a wealth of experience and her topic today is talking about actually such a priority with stoma care, and that is chatting about the healthy skin around your stoma. Sister Monica Frank, over to you. Thank you so much. Thank you, Cara. It's nice to see everybody, and from a very rainy and cold Cape Town, I think we're going to have a super day today. I'm going to start my presentation with the importance of appropriate ostomy appliance changing routine. And we've got the word there apply. If you can just go one slide back, please. Apply, remove, and check. We just call it ARC. And I think that will show us how important the changing routine is with ostomates. Next one. Our objective today is to minimize or prevent perisomal skin irritation. I don't think people realize how severe it can get. And if you have a severe skin irritation, there's added time looking after your stoma and the resources. Because if you have a skin irritation, you will always need extra appliances. Uh, you're going to need extra products. You're going to, it will be extra cost. And I think that's why it's extremely important to make sure your skin is in perfect condition. 
most important for me as a stoma nurse, you've got to have a good quality of life. I really don't want my patients to sit at home because they're scared to go out. And this is what we see, unfortunately. Patients should embrace their stoma, make it their own, and go out and have a laugh. Next slide. Let's just have a look at what research show us, and it was quite an eye-opening for me as a nurse. Okay. An ostomy study showed that 57% of people with ileostomies have skin disorders. That's quite high. And an ileostomy is a stoma from the small bowel. The stools are usually liquid and very corrosive to the skin. And that is why you've got to give extra attention to any patient with an ileostomy. 48% of urostomies, that's our urine stomas, and that usually, remember, it leaves so easily because it's liquid. If you have the correct product, you shouldn't leak. And this is why that is important. If a patient with a urine stoma leaks all the time, go into your stoma nurse. You have to make sure you are on the correct product. And then colostomy is 35%. I still think that's quite a high percentage. Uh, I would love to see it much lower. And this is why for any skin problem, please go and see your stoma nurse. It's got to be looked at. If we looked at this study, if you have an amount of people and you see that the nurse assessment is 60% she thinks her patient has got 60% of skin disorder, but the patient thinks it's only 32%. So people don't really realize that they have skin disorders. And that to me is worrying. A patient must be able to identify when the skin is not perfect. And leakage has a negative effect on both peristyle of skin and quality of life. If we look at the peristyle of skin, how high the leakage is, people always have leakage, or often. And if we look at the quality of life, then it just shows me people haven't got quality of life. And we, as nurses, as stoma nurses, need to address this. We need to teach our patients to take their skin as a, as a very high priority in their lives. It is important to prevent this vicious circle of leakage, peristyle skin and quality of life. I've just mentioned it, but um, make sure your patient is very much aware of it. So this is our, um, our um, what we're going to teach our patients, how to apply the stoma bag correctly, how to remove it correctly, and how to check. And check is probably the most important. We want our patients to have a life. We want our patients to dive into the sea and say, I can't swim, even though I've got a bag. People ask me uh, whether they can shower with their patients. This should be a given. Um, but we need to educate that to our people. And this is part of quality of life. Enjoy the water. Enjoy life. People must go and climb the mountain. People must go and get on a bicycle and go for a ride. People must be able to socialize. And that you can only do if you've got... I just want, I want to repeat the slide and then just say how I want people to embrace life, to dive into the sea, to go and climb the mountain, to be able to travel. 
Um, but only if, if people have got no skin disorders, they can do that. Thank you. Let's go to apply, how to apply correctly. First of all, we need a snug fit. That is key. I usually tell my people about two millimeters between your base of your stoma bag and your and your stoma. The next one is you've got to have a clean and a completely dry skin. One of my patients actually went to the doctor with a sore skin last week and he prescribed a cream. The minute you have a cream, the base plate is not going to sit. It's going to stick. So the patient actually just had more problems because the skin wasn't dry, the skin wasn't clean, and the base plate came off. So make sure there's no creams or anything under your base plate. And water is actually fine to clean it. And people are usually, they look at me and say, only water, and that's perfect. You don't need alcohol, you don't need Dettol, or whatever people are coming up with. Water is fine to clean your stoma. Nice lukewarm water is perfect. Some people use um, a wet wipe, perfect, if there's no deodorants or anything in it. Um, and this, number four, is quite important. The whole of the base plate must match the shape and size of your stoma. If you look at the back of a bag, it's usually um, round rings that you can cut to perfect sizes. But a stoma is very seldom a perfect circle. If the stoma is oval, you have to cut it oval. If it's got an odd shape, you cut an odd shape. Um, it's got to fit snugly around the stoma. And this is the only way you are going to protect your skin. And then supporting products um, may be needed to prevent leakage and to protect your skin. Now, all the companies have got excellent products. They all have adhesive remover, skin protector, spikes. Uh, so whatever you are using, that company will probably have it. And all the company's products are fantastic for any stoma patient. So please make use of it and please see your stoma therapist if you don't know how to apply it. How to remove correctly. Um, okay, let's go to stoma changes. The stoma may change in shape and size. That is probably the most important thing you have to tell your patients when leaving hospital. I find many of my patients these days, especially because of COVID, they leave hospital quite soon after surgery, often three days after operation. You have to tell your patients that the abdomen is still sw uh, swollen. Once the swelling goes down, your stoma size will also go down. And then it is important to cut your bag a little bit smaller to fit your stoma. And we often see this, that patients cut, say for instance, 45 millimeter in hospital, and then a month later, they're still cutting 45, but the stoma is now 35 millimeter. And that is when you're going to get your skin irritation. So, we have to teach that, um, and each box of appliances has got a measuring device, how patients can measure their stomas, and I think they should do it on a regular basis to make sure you are cutting to fit. Okay. How to remove correctly. I had a patient there, in fact, last week in my clinic, he sits on the bed and he just rips the bag off. And then we had a small skin tear. Now that skin tear can be very painful. And that is what we don't want. I know patients get used to the bag and just say, no, it's easy, I rip it off. It's, it's, not, it's not a good idea. Um, patients that are very hairy, they should shave to remove it correctly. And all the companies have got adhesive remover sprays or wipes. So make use of it. We've got it. Um, pull your skin, your, your, your bag, or very gently. 
make sure you've got this rolling technique by uh, getting it off. Apply pressure on your skin with your other hand. Um, another thing, if we look at number five, a base plate should or a bag should be changed when there's itching or burning, but I'll speak to that a little bit later as well. Thank you. And this is what we are seeing um, when you are skin tearing or skin stripping, and this is when you just rip your bag off all the appliance, it's the wrong appliance for your bag. The picture on the right is quite severe. Um, the picture on the left is not that bad, but people still need advice from their sister for treating it. And we don't want people to just leave it and think it is all right to have a thing like that. Next slide. Signs of leakage. If we look at the one picture on the left, there's stoma output seeping already from your stoma. Now that patient will probably have a little bit of an itch or a little bit of a burning sensation. And I would recommend, if you have that, take your bag off and check your stoma and skin. If we look at the picture on the right, by then the stoma, um, the leakage is already beyond your base plate. It's on your skin. My worry is what I see, what's happening mostly in hospitals. Nurses don't always want to, to change the appliance for the patient. So they take microfilm, whatever they can get, and pack it around that leakage and paste it on and prevent and trying to prevent the leakage further. By that stage, you have caused so much damage to your skin. And to me, it is like the same as you have a baby with a dirty nappy and you don't want to change it and you just put the nappy back. That baby will have a severe nappy rash. And this is exactly what we see, what's happening with the right one particular. By the time you've taped it with microfilm and with surgery pads and with whatever you can get, the damage is quite severe. And in my practice, you are not allowed to try and hide a leak. If there's a leak, take it off, wash it, apply it in there. Very important. So what should I do to, to check my stoma? First of all, what I teach my patients, and I think it's important and people forget it, check the adhesive side of your stoma, of the bag, because that will tell you where the leak is and often you get uh, to see which side of your stoma the leak is happening, and then you can give attention to that side. If there's a little of an indentation or a little bit of a fold, that is where the leak will happen, and you will see it on the back of your base plate. Um, and check your skin. People will say, oh, no, I don't see my stoma properly. I'm not going to check it. Take a mirror and look at your skin. Teach your patient to look at the surrounding skin. This is the only way you will know that there's redness or not. So that is actually extremely important. Thank you. A healthy skin is what we would like to see on the left hand side. Perfect skin. Um, and if you look at the base plate, on the back of the base plate, there's no leakage. This is what we love to see. On the right, the skin irritation. It may be the appliance that is not fitting properly. Perhaps you're a little bit sensitive to, to one product, and I think it's the uh, nurse should then change it to another product. And that seems very mild, but it needs to be looked at definitely. 
center. There's some severe skin irritation. Often it's from leakage. Um, and your marks will be weeping, bleeding, burning, itchy around the stoma. Um, and all these, all the four pictures here will need attention from your stoma nurse. If I just look at the upper one on the left, that patient probably cut the stoma bag too big. Um, others are due to leakage. Um, that can cause an ulceration again. And by the time it's like this, it can only get severe and more problems if you don't uh, meet up with your stoma nurse to see what she can do. And the cost of treatment is, of course, higher. Okay. Just a few pictures of skin irritation. You can get ulcerations. If we look at the second picture, there you can see how the stoma uh, fluid was leaking. And that is exactly what we will see on your skin. And as I say again, people forget that they need to look at the adhesive part to see where the leak is. On the third picture, second to your right, you can see it's probably an ileostomy and just on that lower end, it is leaking. So the stoma nurse should look and do something to that lower part of your stoma. Uh, if we look at the uh, picture on the right, Look at the adhesive on the base plate, completely macerated. There was a big leak, but the skin looks terrible, but the stoma is actually also not healthy. It's probably completely stenosed. It's retracted. Uh, it needs more attention than the stoma therapist can probably give. You probably need a revision. And um, patients carry on and don't get anybody to see it. So again, please contact your nurse or some uh, therapist if you have any of these conditions. You can resume normal life with the stoma. The stoma plant that fits your body profile, and that is important. Your body profile, if you had a stoma 10 years ago, is probably a little bit different than it was 10 years ago. Make sure you adapt to your different body profile as well. An appropriate change routine is all that you need. Let's just quickly go, um, go over it again. There are three important steps to prevent leakage and irritation. Apply it correctly, remove it correctly, and check it correctly. Thank you. Apply. Let's see what will happen if you apply it with only water, a completely dry skin. It should be a healthy, no alcohol. The hole in the adhesive should be cut to shape. And a good rule is not to lose, not to tight. There, your stoma therapist can guide you whether you need a protective seal, whether you need a paste, whether you need powder. And that the stoma therapist can describe. I often have people, in fact, had it in my clinic this week, patients go onto the internet and they read powder is the thing to use. But if you don't know how to use it correctly, you can also do more harm than, than good. So make sure if you need a product or if you use a product, you're using it for the right reason. Um, and then, on the last one, it says accessories like a face can help. I feel a face is only helpful if you do it, use it correctly and your nurse has to guide you why you're using it. I don't think you should just use products because it's available. You've got to have a reason why you're using an accessory. So make sure you know that it's the correct way of applying. I've mentioned it now before, but we will just mention it again. The shape and size is important. Make sure you cut it to the correct size. Um, as I said, I in fact, in, in one of my hospitals during the week, I had um, the nurse cut the base, but she said, yes, but on the base it says you can cut to 50, so I just cut it to 50. 
that the sperma is 30 millimeters, so it's wrong. Um, in order to make your applying your appliance work and you have a quality of life, remember that what we're striving is striving for. Everything must be to have a normal life, but that life must be purposeful and full of quality. Next slide. Remove. I'm not going to go into this again, but very gentle remove. Don't just rip your bag off um, and make sure if you are shaving um, that you care to your skin as well. Um, right, next slide, please. Again, this is healthy. This is actually beautiful, and we don't often see this. Um, but this is the difference between quality of life and no life at all. Sitting in the corner because you've got a sore stoma, um, I don't want that to happen. Check again. Have a mirror. People forget that they can just have a small mirror in their, in their purse, at home, stand in front of a mirror, check that skin. If there's redness, do something about it. Okay. And our mission is, as nurses, to make it easier for people with intimate health care needs. We need to understand them. We need to be passionate about our work and our patient's health. And we respect our patient's health. This is why we need to care for it. And we want to set a global standard for listening to our patients and respond to them. Thank you very much. Have a good day. Thank you so much, Monica, for that very informative session. Um, I definitely love the apply, remove, check. And I think the mirror is also a fantastic idea. I think that's one of the most challenging experiences we also get told about is that patients struggle to actually see what's going on and they feel quite disempowered. So I think, wow, I think that mirror as a, just as a basic tool to go with everything else will make such a difference just to help them have a better idea of what's going on. Um, I also love the rolling method. So wow, there's some really excellent information there that I hope you all benefited from. So next on our fantastic list of presenters, we have Kim Roberts. She is a Convertech Regional Sales Manager and um, Prof Educational Lead. Um, their motto is that Ostomates rights are human rights and that the right to be me um, is um, a big part of what they believe in um, and it's their World Ostomy Day motto. Kim is going to be sharing with us some tips and tricks from their world-renowned Ostomy Support prog Program called Me Plus. Um, and the program helps ostomates build physical strength and mental confidence to get back to the things they enjoy and live a happy and productive life. I think that's something very similar to the message of Kim, and I think that really is the essence of today, is that we just want to empower stoma patients to really um, have the skills and have the tools to really thrive and to live a good life. So thank you so much, Kim. We're looking so forward to hearing what you have to share with us. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Cora. I don't think I need to do my presentation because you've done such a good job of introducing it. <laughs> Thank you for that. Um, really excited to be a part of today. And I'd really just like to um, acknowledge our stoma patients today and wish you all a very happy World Ostomy Day. Um, as Cora mentioned, my name is Kim Roberts and I'm the Regional Sales Manager from Convertec. And today, I'll just wait for the slides to come up, and then we'll be talking on something that will hopefully be extremely beneficial for, for you um, as a patient along your journey. So today, we're going to do quite a, a bit of reflection and just rethinking back to um, the day when you had your operation. So we're just going to discuss the topic of rethinking your stoma surgery recovery. So we can go start with the first slide. So I want everybody to just take a moment to just reflect, um, really just think back to all of the advice that you received post-operatively. Um, what advice did you as a patient receive for that post-operative patient? And really just give it a bit of a moment to, to think. And then if we can just go to the next slide. And just to add on that reflection, um, did you receive a time frame in which you had um, to return back to physical activity or return back to work? 
And as a patient, um, how did this feel? Was it overwhelming to receive all of this advice? Just, just really take a moment to, to reflect on that. If anybody is comfortable, you're welcome to put your feelings in the chat box, um, just to get a bit of engagement, if any of the patients are comfortable. So I don't know if a, if a lot of people do it as often as I do, but Dr. Google has definitely become a frequent way to search um, if anything is happening in your life. And there were some web search results just done specifically from patients with regards to stoma surgery recovery. Um, so I've just put a few up here. Um, one of them being, why can't I do any carrying or lifting after I've had my stoma surgery? And, um, you know, the results that sort of pop up are for about three months, you need to avoid carrying anything. So a simple thing like going to the shop and buying your groceries, um, not being able to lift anything heavier, heavier than a kettle of water, as this could result in a hernia. And I think as patients, um, that is one of the biggest fears is a hernia that would result from the stoma. Um, there's another web search that I'm going to put up. So when can I get back to gym and when can I get back into the swimming pool? So um, generally, you know, in consultation with your surgeon and with your nurses and obviously with, with Dr. Google in a lot of the cases, um, the, the sort of general guideline is about six weeks um, after discharge before you can start doing your formal exercise. But it also, um, you know, important to be mindful of the fact that your abdominal muscles need to heal completely. So you're looking at, especially if you're quite an active patient, at least about three months before, before you can really start doing anything. And I think just to, to reflect again, just on sort of how all of that information on top of everything that you're dealing with, how that felt. So just to, to take it back to a bit of research, so there was a study that was done um, in 2020, just looking at post-operative work and returning to activity um, post-abdominal surgery. Um, and the key points from that study is that there was definitely gaps in understanding what is best for, for our patients post-postoperatively. Um, there's actually no evidence to form the basis for restrictions in terms of time in terms of what type of activity you're able to get back to. Um, there's also unclear evidence as to whether post-operative activity actually increases or decreases the risk of the hernia, which when we went through this module was actually quite interesting, an interesting point for me. And um, then there was also obviously from that stemmed the need for clinical trials to be done. So another reflection. Um, so if you look at this, this is actually an Instagram or Facebook post. And the patient here said, got my ileostomy 10 days ago. I will not be stopped. I love the gym. If I can please ask on the chat box just for your thoughts when you saw, when you see this image. Just for a little bit of engagement. I see fantastic spirit, anybody else? I think specifically looking at the fact that it's 10 days post-operatively. Tough move, <laughs> but is it safe so soon? So there's a lot of, a lot of ouch, I'm scared. So it's, it's very mixed emotions. Okay, so we can move on to the next slide. So this was just some survey data done on, on patients between the, the timeframe of 2016 and 2018. Um, so 51% of patients actually became less active, much, much less active um, after they've had surgery. 90%, very interesting statistic, 90% of patients do not meet the physical guidelines that are needed, which is 150 minutes per week. And then 82% of patients were not given any advice about abdominal ex um, exercises that are available. And then 87% of patients actually do not do any abdominal exercises as part of their recovery. So some very interesting statistics here in terms of what is presented to a patient across, um, this was a survey that was done um, called living with a stoma. 
um, done across between 2016 and 2018. And then, um, so the Association of Stoma Care um, Nurses in the UK, so they've put together these guidelines in 2016. Obviously things have changed and developed. Um, so what was the key, the key guidelines as part of it is that preparing your body for surgery is just as important as following surgery. Um, so that is just as much a part of the package in, in preventing and, and um, you know, that risk of developing a parasomalia. Then your physiotherapists who obviously form quite a fundamental part of your recovery journey. They generally recommend that you commence gentle, gentle abdominal exercise about three to four days after surgery. And I think in a lot of cases, what that physio looks like is just getting up of your, out of your bed and walking. And then it's also important to persevere and carry out these exercises daily. So it's not only that you're doing it just post-operatively, but it's a long-term commitment. So once you sign up, you are doing this to help you for the rest of your life to prevent parastomal hernia from occurring. And these guidelines therefore advise that all patients that have a stoma be informed of these poor muscle exercises and that they try to initiate it as early as possible in the journey of having a stoma. So today I'd like to introduce um, everyone on this call. Very exciting, very exciting to introduce the um, Me Plus recovery program. So it says it's the Me Plus Get Ready um, and it's helping you get ready not only for your surgery, but to also get ready for your recovery journey. And um, what it comprises of is essential exercises for your stoma surgery preparation, and then also for your recovery. So then just to, to touch on the founder of this is a lady by the name of Sarah Russell, who is the clinical exercise specialist at Convitec. She's actually written a very interesting book, um, The Bowel Cancer Recovery Toolkit. You can see it over there on the top right hand side. It is available for purchase. Um, so, so Sarah Russell's book is really a great toolkit. It's something worth looking into. I can post the link and share that with everyone. Um, so yeah, if we'll just move on, I'm just gonna give you, show you a video, um, which is Sarah Russell just explaining a little bit more about herself. Hello, my name is Sarah Russell. I'm a clinical exercise specialist working with cancer patients and people who have had stoma surgery. In 2010, I had five bowel surgeries and finally had a permanent stoma in 2012. After each surgery, I knew I needed to strengthen my abdominal muscles and improve my core function. My whole abdominal area felt weak and vulnerable and I was worried about developing a hernia and getting back to running and doing all the things I loved. I looked for information to help my recovery and couldn't really find anything. I asked everyone involved in my care, my surgeon, stoma nurse and physiotherapist, and no one could offer specific help. There weren't any guidelines and there was no consensus on what to do, especially about abdominal exercises. So I took time to do some research, develop exercises and train in clinical Pilates. I realized that a step-by-step -step approach to recovery and rehabilitation was essential with a very specific focus on the core muscles, but in a very gentle way. Supported by Convitec, I developed the post-surgery rehabilitation Me Plus Recovery Programme. It's about building the core muscles from the inside out, almost like creating an internal support garment. After the trauma of surgery, we need to retrain the deep inner core muscles with the right exercises. Me Plus Recovery allows people, no matter their age or previous level of exercise, to feel more confident about lifting and moving in everyday life. And it forms the foundation if they wish to be more active or get back to doing sports. There is also some evidence that these exercises reduce the risk of parastomal hernia. I believe the Me Plus Recovery programme should be an essential part of recovery for everyone who has colorectal surgery. The exercises can be learnt before surgery and should be started as soon as possible after your operation. UK stoma nursing guidelines state that people should start these exercises three to four days post-surgery if possible. However, if you've already had surgery, starting the Me Plus Recovery Programme at any time 
will help you build strength and confidence to move more and live an active life. Thank you. Um, so just to touch on what Sarah Russell has shared, um, so just a little bit more about the Knee Plus Recovery Series. So this series provides an important information on how to lift and move safely, um, lift objects, lifting things heavier than a kettle. Um, it touches on strengthening your pelvic floor. And then it's a three phase core and abdominal series. So there's actually three phases to this program. Like I said, it's not only for those that are going for surgery, any way along your journey, you're able to join in and benefit from this recovery series. So what are the goals um, that, want to, that we want to achieve with the Me Plus Recovery Program? So number one would be for you as a patient to be able to return to your normal activities, your work, your life, your, you know, just being like touching on what Monica said, just your quality of life and just returning to that a little bit sooner. It would be for you to be able to rebuild your confidence, your physical and your mental confidence. I think after having your surgery, it's obviously a, you take a bit of a knock and this is just something to just assist and, and rebuild your confidence. Um, it's definitely going to help your, your muscle, your core muscles and your pelvic floor function. Um, we went through the exercises when we did the training and um, I must admit, I definitely woke up feeling sore the next day. So it's definitely going to engage all of that. And then it's going to empower you. It's going to empower you as a patient to enable yourself and to focus on the positives um, in the midst of everything that, that you're going through. Um, it's it's go there to increase your physical activity um, levels. And then like Sarah touched on this, obviously, um, very importantly, um, this, it can reduce your risk of a parastomal hernia. So in terms of patient support, um, there is a website that can be um, looked at, the Me Plus website. You're able to contact your local um, Combatex sales representative. And then we're very, very, very excited about the upcoming collaboration with cancer. So please keep a, a lookout for that um, in terms of their social media and just constant collaboration on that. And we, we're really excited to get that pilot project going. And yeah, if there's any further questions, please don't, don't hesitate to to um, reach out and then just thank you again on behalf of Convitec. I'd like to wish um, all our patients here a very happy World Ostomy Day and thank you for your time. Thank you so much, Kim. Well, that was some really excellent information and I think it's not about exercising. I think it's actually about what you're doing. I think that's the challenge. I think going and doing hectic weights but I mean, um, maybe that's not the, the right thing to do, but I think there's definitely a stigma around exercising and protecting your stomach and protecting your core. But if you look at it in a different way, it's actually about stabilizing, um, gaining strength and helping you cope better. So three to four days after surgery is, wow, that's actually fantastic. So I don't think a lot of people are aware of that. Um, and I think people are actually quite scared, like I was when I saw the lady there after 10 days with the, with the big weight. Um, but yes, <laughs> I think at the end of the day, that's really fantastic. And I think obviously, as you said, it doesn't matter when you start. I think having an ostomy and having access to something like this and to um, um, strengthen your core and your physicality and get those 150 minutes a week just for over overall health, not only um, for post-stoma, you know, just for overall health and wellness is, is really wonderful. So we're excited to be part of this program. And yes, as Kim said, please keep your eyes um, on us and we'll be sharing some very interesting news and some programs soon about this program so please we just make sure I think uh, Lucy has the link for this and um, yeah and or Kim you can just share in the chat box for everyone they can find out okay, okay. thank you so much Kim for your time we are so grateful we're then going to um, hand over to a wonderful lady called Natalie Maskell uh, she is the founder of Vera SA she is a very busy mom of two a successful entrepreneur passionate athlete and stoma wearer. Natalie's life changed drastically when she was diagnosed with Crohn's disease in her early 20s and after numerous flare-ups and multiple surgeries, Natalie eventually had most of her colon removed and a temporary ileostomy. And through that journey, Various Day was founded. 
Um, and I think one of the most amazing things is that they provide an underwear range for stoma users and they are fantastic. Um, they look great, they feel good. And I think it also just adds that extra bit of confidence that sometimes stoma patients lack. So yeah, it's a really uh, fantastic product. It is also stocked at cancer, um, just as uh, Colopass and Convitec are through our stoma service. So yes, please would love to hand you over to the fantastic Natalie Maskell. Hi, good morning, everybody. Um, okay, thank you very much, Cara, for that uh, very warm welcome. Um, yes, so me, I am I'm a stoma wearer. Um, as, as Cara mentioned, I do have a temporary ileostomy uh, due to Crohn's, but uh, unfortunately, my, my temporary ileostomy um, is, is going to be a part of my life for a very, very long time. Um, yes, I'm a, I'm a mother of two very beautiful, beautiful young children, very active. Um, and um, yeah, so you know, during my journey of having, of having my stoma, I, I battled to find underwear to fit. I, and I thought to myself, well, no, there has to be something different here. And I investigated and I investigated to find underwear. And this is, yep, this is where Vera came along. And uh, funny enough, the name of Vera came along because it is my, um, my second most expensive bag because, um, yeah, that's, that's the name I gave, I gave my stoma. Um, now, as, um, as, we, as we are afraid to go out and, uh, you know, wear beautiful clothes and, um, you know, we, it's, it's a very taboo thing, obviously, you know, lack of education to others. So I decided to, to, to come up with this idea of um, ostomy underwear. Um, okay, the reason why I wanted to do this is so people could feel comfortable in your own skin as, as the presentation shows. Now, um, the panties and the, and the men's brief are, are very comfortable, very stylish, um, and they support your ostomy, your ostomy pouches. And the way it is, it's, it's, you could have, you know, your colostomy, your ileostomy, and um, there's a pocket that runs in between, well, runs across it, that um, supports the bag in there. Okay. Um, can we go to the next slide, please, Emmanuel? <laughs> okay. So here we go with, with, with Vera. I wanted people to feel exceptionally comfortable in their own skin, giving them support and giving them, giving them the confidence to go out. You know, so other people don't know that you have a stoma and actually cannot see your stoma as well. So it supports, it supports those two. It supports, you know, yeah, supports those two. Um, next slide, please. Okay, a little bit about myself. Um, okay, yeah, there we go, as, as, as was mentioned. Okay, so basically it is, it's, it's, it's to be discreet as well. Now, I love my underwear, I really, really do. And it's been, and, and it's happened before where I've had a little oopsie, a little leak, and, and the underwear actually, it's, it, it saves you from those embarrassing moments as well, where, where you know, you have your time to go to the bathroom and, and, and change or, or, you know, sort yourself out as well. So, um, next slide, please. Okay, there is a, uh, a little uh, picture of, of what the underwear is, the men's and the ladies. So the pocket runs from left to right. And obviously, as the bag is on, on, your, on your skin, it actually supports the weight of the bag. So it doesn't hang low and you don't feel like it's going to peel off, off your skin. And it holds it so, so nicely. Um, and it sits flat against your stomach um, and it covers the pouch. So, so the underwear actually sits about, um, I would say about an inch above your belly button. So it, depends, so it doesn't matter if you've got a high stoma or a low stoma, it, it covers it all. And as well as, um, you know, I, I developed a, um, a peristonal hernia, yes. And it also keeps everything in place as well. So um, it, doesn't, it doesn't ride up. And it doesn't um, it's it doesn't ride up and it's um, it's so comfortable. It's my best underwear ever. Next slide, please. 
Okay, there is the men's underwear. Now the men's underwear, as you can see, it's got a, 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 a low, uh, well, should I say a low leg, and um, there it fits up quite nicely, and it is so comfortable. The materials, um, we, the material actually is from Mauritius, and um, it is soft, it's cotton with your little bit of elastine in it, so it does give you that, uh, that pull, and um, there's no pancaking, which, which is really great. Um, and next slide. <laughs> Okay, there we go. And you can wear your wear the underwear while sleeping as well. And it prevents anything, you know, rolling and 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 it's just that the comfort of mind. Next slide, please. Okay, there's the ladies underwear. As you can see, that's the, obviously the, the inside out of it. So it sits, the, as you can see, the bag sits nicely in there, in the pouch that runs across. It's like a little hammock. Um, and yeah, next slide. Okay, now I'm a very, very active person. Now, what, what um, Kim said is that 51% um, people become less active once they develop their stroma. Now, I was completely opposite. I think I became 110% more active. Um, I've competed in uh, five triathlons since having my stroma. Before I had my stroma, not so much. And I'm competing on my sixth one next weekend. Um, yes, so, and it also, it, it, it gives you that sense of security as well. So um, it, it stops the rubbing inflammation and um, obviously detachments and all of that. Next slide, please. Okay, now, there we go. So there's a picture of the, of the men's and the ladies. Now we are very, very proud that we um, we have partnered with Cancer SA, and we are um, partnered with the South African Society of Ostomates as well. Um, next slide. There we go. And you know, we can, you know, wearing the underwear it gets you back into the things that you enjoy the most. Um, as I said, I I, I became exceptionally active after my surgery um but as well you know that the sense of security you know i can go out and i can wear beautiful clothes dress and i don't have to worry about can people see that i've got a stoma and oh, oh, the stoma is getting quite full from um and nobody can see it because it sits so nicely on your skin and it holds everything right towards your skin as well um, it's very comfortable and um, it, yeah, it's very, very comfortable and um, it's, it's the, the beautiful sense of security it gives you. So it gives you that confidence and, 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 and so forth. Um, next slide. There we go. There we go. Um, now the design that we, that we did, it's got, as, as you could see previously, it's got that hidden pocket. So the bag sits as, as it's a, it sits in in it and it's it stops the chafing and it stops minimizes the sweating because of the cotton um and um it's just <laughs> it's beautiful absolutely beautiful uh, next slide please there we go and here's a very interesting thing here okay so this this is here of um of what can cause you having a stoma? Okay, so one in 20,000 people suffer from Elias Daniels syndrome. I can't even pronounce half these words. Um, and 6.8 million people worldwide suffer from, uh, have Crohn's disease, obviously end up having, um, having, having your, your, your ostomy. Um, two, 200,000 children suffer from spina bifida worldwide, which you can have your, your ostomy, as you know. 65% um, over 85 suffer from di diverticulitis uh, disease where you know you can have your stoma. And 0.5% um, obviously with, with uh, correctal cancer. I can't pronounce that word, sorry. <laughs> and um, in 5,000 people suffer from heart spring disease, which um, also ventures in, in, in the stoma. Now, what's great about this underwear as well. You can have, you can have two. You can have a double bag, and um, it fits your double bag. 
um, and they're great feeling knickers. They make you feel like a million bucks, especially with a pair designed specifically for ostomates in mind. Um, yeah, and uh, please please go to my website. Um, it's www.verasa.store. Um, and uh, just for, for today, we actually are running a, a flash sale for World Austin Day. Um, and uh, yeah, I'm very, I'm very, I'm very proud of this. It's the first thing in South Africa that uh, that has this. And um, yeah, as I said, that the material is founded in Mauritius, and um, yeah, and it's actually made in Madagascar. Um, yeah, and it's obviously it's South that sold in South Africa. Thank you so much, Natalie. Wow. Um, I think those, those look just like my husband's underwear from Woolworths that he likes. So <laughs> I'll just say for, because they're so expensive for street, but they look exactly the same. Like you wouldn't, if you're looking at someone wearing it, you actually wouldn't know. And, and, yeah. and, 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 and I think that's so nice. Obviously we know now from the information you gave us about obviously what's happening on and underneath there and all the extra support and love you're getting through wearing it. But um, I, yeah, I think I can really imagine how so many patients could feel so empowered um, if if you look at the full package. And, uh, and, and I think that's something that's such a big and such an important focus of cancer is that we're looking at so many angles of um, of an ostomate's journey, you know what I mean? To making sure that skin is healthy, to making sure um, that if you have any challenges, you can call cancer, you can call um, our, our, our stoma service that Sister Adele will share with you guys towards the end of today, um, to making sure you have the right products that are working well for you, you're not having mm -hmm. leaks, um, that's, and uh, you know, and it's, it's honestly just, I think it's constant care and growth on your journey. And as you find more things, um, and, and more opportunities to help you feel better and more confident, I think then people are going to go and do more things and be more, um, more brave and, um, and, and, and get themselves back. Because we know with a lot of people that initial diagnosis is definitely quite a hit. I think maybe you're one of the few, Natalie, that, that is going to go and start doing crazy marathons. You know, unfortunately, <laughs> you know, <we're> <laughs> Some of patients that actually go more on the reverse. And I think some of those stats that can mention are very true, where people just kind of stop because they feel that their life is over. Um, and I think it's only because they haven't been managed correctly. And when I say managed correctly, it is, I think it's a very big balance of getting the help that you need, but also identifying when you feel something isn't right. And I think that's honestly where it really, really all starts. And I think also, as Sister Monica said about it looks a bit red, red. It's a little bit itchy today. It's, you know, unfortunately, you have to get to a space where you need to like report these things to for help so that like we could see, I think what, where she said, oh, what a beautiful stoma. <laughs> you could just see how passionate she was about, you know what I mean? And we know many patients do not have a beautiful looking stoma. They are struggling and uncomfortable and it's sore. And I think it, you, she shouldn't be in that space. Um, and I think obviously if you can get everything in a, in a good, healthy space, get that stoma looking really lovely and juicy and red and the skin all nice and healthy and you have these gorgeous brooks on, then I think, you know what I mean? You're ready to like, take over the world. So. Yes, wherever you are now in your stoma journey, I think um, it's important to know that there is an opportunity to help you and, um, and, and, and really change some of the challenges you are experiencing. If you have seen any of the presentations and you are noticing something that is a bit different or that you could do, even with the exercises from Kim as well, I think we should all start tomorrow, just like Kim said, just for our own cause, just help with the bops that are going around. Um, uh, but yeah, I think at the end of the day, the real point of today is your health and wellness as someone that's living with an ostomy. And yeah, that's really why everyone is here today. So thank you so much, Nancy, for sharing your journey, your bravery. And yes, it was really wonderful learning from you and understanding why we have the, these amazing um, underwear, this amazing underwear available for people that really need it. And I think it's so wonderful that through all the layers of services that cancer can offer through and with our partners, that we can actually just really empower stoma patients just to have a fuller life. So thank you so much. Thank you very much. I would thank like you. to now hand you over to um, the thorn amongst the roses. Um, we are so grateful to have a man on the, on the panel with, with all the estrogen here. We have the fantastic um, Isaac de Bobo. He really dressed up for us today. He's got a tie. So you're all very lucky. Um, <laughs> he, uh, 
he he really dressed up for everyone today. Um, Isaac is a professional nurse uh, by trade that worked in quite a few different specialities, from theatre, ICU, surgical, and medical units for over 14 years before he decided to have a change and look into the medical devices industry. He started as a junior representative in 2000 and worked himself up to the ranks where he gained a lot of experience in both wound and stomach care, which are actually quite um, specialized fields, and is currently working for Hartman as a product specialist. Isaac will be sharing about a topic that is important for us to admit, as it can impact your emotional levels and partnerships. And I think for us, um, my colleague Adele said earlier before we started the webinar, how sexuality and intimacy is obviously something that is uh, a difficult topic. I think it is definitely something that is um, something that's hard to process for a lot of um, Austrian patients just because it's difficult to navigate. And I think we're so grateful to have Isaac here to really chat about this important topic and to really help people navigate so they can still have a healthy sex life with, with their partners they love and that people can navigate around this. Um, and, and as we said, to have a healthy and full life. Thank you so much, Isaac, for um, taking this topic on and sharing with us this morning. Over to you. Thank you very much, Kara, uh, and thanks to uh, Cancer Association for allowing me to, to come and present to the, the people here. Uh, I hope everybody is enjoying himself thus far, and happy International Ostomy Day to everyone. Um, like Kara uh, has just said, I'm a professional nurse working for Holista uh, uh, at the moment. And then, um, yeah, I'm a very, people don't know this, I'm a very excellent chess player. And I've groomed my son, who's actually now better than myself at the moment, and I'm ashamed of that. I regret each and every moment, why did I teach him? Because he beats me every time I want to. So I would like to challenge anyone who likes chess, maybe to, to make an appointment with either Kara or Adele so that we can, hook up and, and come and play chairs. I know most of the people when faced with the eventuality of, of Ostom creation, they, they've got loads and loads of concerns. Why me? Uh, will I be better uh, at my work anymore? Will I be, how will people consider me or how will people treat me henceforth? And I'm going to discuss with you a very, very uh, big concern uh, which is living with ostomy, sex, and parenthood. Um, yeah, intimacy and parenthood, this uh, feeling consent, which is natural. Uh, intimacy and par uh, parenthood still possible uh, post-trauma creation. Most of the people think that after the stoma creation, then everything comes to a standstill and life will still go on. So for people to feel concerned after, uh, I mean, when they are given the, the diagnosis, which will lead to ostomy creation, they feel concerned and which is very, very natural. Questions coming to mind is how will stoma affect my pregnancy if maybe it's a woman or maybe even if it's a, 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 a man for feeling for his woman, how will it affect the pregnancy as well as childbearing? Uh, what if my partner looks at me, at, uh, will they look at, uh, at me differently? How will sexual activity be impacted by a pouch wearing? Well, there are good news uh, with this uh, nonetheless. Many people have happy and fulfilling lives after the, the stoma surgery. And it's very possible to have normal sex after, after the surgery because bear in mind the reproductive uh, system is separate from the the, the gastrointestinal or the urinary system. So uh, the concerns, like I said, are natural, but now at least uh, the good news is that the, the sex can also be as normal as before. Even to have children and families is very, very possible after the, uh, the stomach creation. Next slide, please. Relationship and confidence. When fully clothed, uh, pouch become discreet. Over and above what Natalie has just said now, um, I mean, it's a very fantastic garments that she has created that increases the discretion as well. But bear in mind, most of the pouches have got integrated filters that can 
let air out to even look more discreet. So uh, discretion is possible even, uh, uh, I mean, when wearing clothes. It is the decision of an ostomate to disclose information about surgery or not. So if one doesn't want to disclose, therefore uh, it's up to him or her, but now that can impact the, the intimacy. But when uh, planning to have uh, intimacy, uh, we, we cannot ignore the, the pouch. It, it must be discussed. So therefore the partner will have shared, if it's a long-term or long-standing relationship, the partner will have shared the illness and surgery with, with, with the, the patient. So both will get used to, uh, to the pouch being worn by the, by the other partner. Uh, but if the partner is new, it's best to discuss the situation before intimacy can ensue. Because I mean, it, it, it can become very embarrassing for one to suddenly just uh, discover that one is, uh, is, is, is having a stoma. So they must discuss that beforehand. Next slide, please. If in a serious relationship, like I said before, involve your, uh, the partner as soon as is possible, the partner, might, the partner might want to join uh, the, the patient during counseling by the stoma nurse. I mean, our stoma nurses and the general healthcare workers are doing stellar job uh, by providing the necessary pre-op counseling so that the people can live better with the stoma thereafter. This will help a great deal by sharing this experience together because if the other partner is, is left behind, then he will not be brought up to, up to speed about what is happening with the other person. They must see how the pouch is, is changed while the person is still in hospital. This is beneficial while the healthcare worker is near so that should there be any possible questions, then they can be answered promptly. Bear in mind, recovery takes time. So therefore, be involving uh, oneself in sexual activities might slow down the healing as well. So they must, they, it must, it must uh, be a slowly approaching approach, uh, uh, activity. Take time before resuming sexual intercourse because some of the, 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 um, the operations are so gross that maybe they have removed the whole colon or maybe they have removed the whole rectum. So therefore, in, even though on the, on the skin it might look healed, but inside it will have taken much more time. Having sex, many, many people ask, how do people uh, with stoma have sex? The answer is the same way as people without stoma. Conventional positions are possible, just a, a, it's a matter of preference for anyone. So it doesn't matter if somebody before, before operation was preferring a, a sexual positions in, such a, in a certain way, it doesn't de, uh, preclude them from doing that even after the stoma. Bear in mind the stoma should stoma, even though because the mucus is on the outside, it should never be used for penetration because this will traumatize that stoma. Take it slowly and gently at first. Like I said, healing takes time. So therefore, uh, it, it must be done very, very slowly and gently. Note that if there is chemotherapy or radiation afterwards, this might affect intercourse uh, because some, some other patients complain of dryness uh, as well as it might also affect the pregnancy as well as trying to conceive children, so bear that in mind. And I think during the counseling, this will also be, 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 be mentioned during that uh, counseling. It's advisable to, to empty the pouch every time before intercourse, because that might obviously disturb uh, the action. Some people might prefer covering the pouch with cotton, uh, cotton cover, uh, if, but if, if, if they, the, the, the product is having that fabric on top, it won't be necessary. So the people do not actually want to feel uh, that plastic uh, material of the pouch. So it might be advisable to cover it with cotton if it doesn't have that fabric. There are also smaller pouches or caps if discretion is a concern. So one can teach the stoma to go at a certain time and then just wearing a cap, which is very, very discreet and which can also allow people who might prefer swimming and heavy exercises, but this can also be worn during sexual activity. Next slide, please. 
Mechanics and penetration. Bear in mind, perineal wound is incurred during rectal removal. So if there is any uh, rectal removal, there will be a perineal wound. This wound takes time to heal, like I mentioned before. That sexual intercourse might be painful, so bear that in mind every time. Another consideration, the space left when colon is removed might cause the uterus to shift. So that might also uh, affect the, uh, the childbearing or conception as well. The nerve supply in the clitoris might be injured during surgery resulting in less sensitivity. So all this information is necessary so that the people are not just taken by surprise when these things happen. So it is just a pre-warning that this might happen during the, 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 uh, the surgery. Um, if removed rectum was used for penetration, this might, might cause a problem to the couple. So this, uh, this uh, decision to remove the, the, the rectum bear in mind, even if that was the, the rectum was used as a penetration method, bear in mind, if the doctor decides to remove the, the rectum, note that it is a clinical judgment that is done by the doctor to save lives. So therefore, another method might, might, be, uh, might be sought. Importance. It is very, uh, a, a big issue following surgery importance. Sem temporary imp importance is possible and it's just a matter of time. So not all hope is, is lost. So be aware that the, impo the importance uh, can be temporary. Within a, uh, some few months, healing should have happened and then uh, the person can go back to, to, to normal uh, being before the operation. Sometimes healing takes long. It can be up to two years before it's clear whether the importance is permanent or whether it is temporary. So don't, don't, don't be too much anxious. It can take time, but always seek for help if, if you are very much concerned. Uh, nerves controlling erection and ejaculation might be injured too, affecting these uh, this, this experiences. So bear that in mind as well, that if you, you, uh, there is no re e e erection or maybe ejaculation, uh, seek help so that maybe an alternative can be, can be sought, if any. Surgery for bowel cancer is extensive and it can be damaging to the nerves. In case of permanent impotence, there are surgical techniques that have been developed. Just talk to your stoma therapist or your surgeon so that maybe they can come with, with a plan as to how to, 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 to assist. When it comes to contraception, many people with stomas choose to become parents. However, if one doesn't want children, uh, contraception is also available. And there are many forms of contraceptions in the market. So just talk to your healthcare professional other forms of common methods can include usage of condo, uh, the barrier usage, the inter, uh, uh, intrauterine devices, or an injection. Just talk to your, your healthcare worker if for a favorable method. In some ileostomies, pill absorption might not be adequate because bear in mind the uh, the, the, the ileostomy, the small bowel might be reached much quicker. So therefore the absorption of the pill might not be, be adequate. So the health, healthcare uh, professional might ad adjust the, the, the dosage of the pill so that it can, become, uh, it can become more adequate so that no uh, accidents, so to say, can happen. Condoms are very reliable to those who don't want to take medication. So if somebody doesn't want, or maybe somebody is experiencing side effects uh, like weight gaining and all of that. So preferably condoms can be used to, to uh, as a matter of, uh, as, as another option of uh, contraception. Conceiving a child, people with stoma, uh, with stomas might want to have children as well, just like any other person, because they are also normal people. Uh, normal vaginal delivery is common, as long as the reproductive organs are not damaged. 
So having a stomach should, 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 should have no effect at all. Before attempting to get pregnant, talk to your healthcare, your stomach therapist or your doctor uh, re regarding, your, regarding your health. People might be referred to gynecologists. And then when suspecting pregnancy, please tell your healthcare worker, your stomach therapist, so that they might give you the, uh, the relevant advice as your pregnancy ad uh, advances. Uh, might, you might experience morning sickness just like any other person and some changes in your stomach uh, might, might, uh, uh, might, might uh, affect you. So talk to your stomach therapist so that they can also advise you to adjust your, 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 your device as the, stomach pro uh, as the pro pregnancy progresses. Discuss your plans uh, to want to conceive before starting chemo or radiation. Like I said, these two can affect pregnancy as well. So uh, you must discuss your plans if you want to get pregnant. Next slide, please. Questions about your pregnancy. Some experience intestinal obstructions occasional. This can be caused by enlarging uterus that blocks passage of intestinal contents. So ileostomy can also be blocked with resultant of, of abdominal distension, cramps, as well as pains. These are just things to, to let people know that these are the possible things uh, that can, can also happen. Restrict your diet to fluids when this happens because fluids will also increase uh, the, uh, the softness of the, the, the effluent. If this is persistent, ask for help from your, your, your healthcare worker, your stomach therapist, so that they can come with an alternative or maybe something to help you. Next slide, please. As the abdomen, uh, abdomen enlarges, you might need modification of the pouches, like I said, because it increases some of the people, let's say maybe the stomach was, was flush with the skin. So as, as the, the, the tummy increases, then it might need the relevant adjustment of the of the pouches, like you might need to, uh, you might not need convexity anymore, or you'd have to change your type of convexity, if any. It's good to consult your 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 stomach therapist so that they can assess you properly, and then they can give you or they can prescribe the relevant device for you. You must also continue measuring your stomach with with every pouch changing because bear in mind the uh, the abdomen is enlarging every time so therefore continuously don't don't think that it, for an example if you are wearing a pre uh, a, a stomach that is uh, cut to 54 it will always be like that always measure it the pouch adjustment might change when abdomen adjusts as well so therefore every time it must be examined well and measured before every pouch changes. Getting back to life and also meet uh, 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 product supplies. Getting back to your pre-op condition is possible and your sex life can, can go where it used to be. Having a stomach doesn't have to minimize you enjoying life. Like that, I, this reminds me of that picture that Monica showed me that you must just go back to your swimming, uh, approach life as if you are going back to, in a pool of, of, of water. Consult with your healthcare workers if you need more uh, information. Once you have established which product is fit for you, you need to find the, uh, 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 an ongoing uh, 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 provision for your ostomy products. Considerations, where you can get your supplies locally, because let's say maybe you are in, in, in another place, you must find out where the supplies can be sought with ease. Can your supplier bill your medical insurance or should you derive your, your supplies from the local pharmacy or even maybe from, from the wholesaler? So for more information uh, on, on Holista products and educational materials, you can visit us on www.holista.com for more information. I think that is the last uh, slide. And I want to thank you very much for your, for your attention.
uh, I hope it has it has it has brought some light uh, to everyone. Thank you so much like once more, Kara. Thank you so much, Isaac, for your time. We really do appreciate it. If there are any questions that you would like to put forward to any of our speakers, please do put them in the chat box. We are running a little bit over time, so if we do not have enough time to get to them in the session, we will do a follow-up um, and actually follow up with you with the answers to those questions posed to our speakers. Um, thank you so much, Isaac. I think the thing that I remember the most about your, your presentation is that how do you have sex with the ostomy? And it's like everybody else. And I think it's obviously maybe a difficult process, but I think um, working together and um, having your partner there in your um, sessions and um, with the counseling and with your stoma nurse, um, you guys can really work around it. And I think where there's love, it'll conquer everything. So thank you so much, Isaac, for all that fantastic information. Just to prove again, I think the message of all our speakers that patients with ostomies can live a healthy and normal productive life, just like everyone else. So thank you so much for that, Isaac. I'm now going to hand over to um, one of our other next speakers, Megan pence Clates. She is actually cancer's consulting nutrition and dietetic um, specialist. She actually owns her own nutrition consultancy, where she consults to clients on various issues, including weight loss, sport, fitness, and wellness, diseases of lifestyle, such as diabetes, insulin resistance, metabolic syndrome, heart disease, and cancer, and also quite a big focus on gastrointestinal diseases like irritable bowel syndrome. She has um, a specialized focus on integrative lifestyle approach, which is just really having a balanced lifestyle um, and keeping everything in place. Uh, also, and something that she is also quite passionate about is stoma and ostomy patients. And she says how we know how, how food can have such a massive impact. We, we, we really tried to design this um, webinar to have uh, to really speak on a variety of areas that can impact someone living with an ostomy and stoma. And I think food plays a massive role. Um, and he, she's here to speak to us about how this can be managed well, certain foods that can have um, maybe a bit more of a challenging effect um, and some really fantastic tips and info. She unfortunately isn't here personally today like our other speakers, but we have done a pre-recording of her. So any questions you might have for her, please, or any of our other speakers, don't be shy, put them in the chat box and we'll get back to you with some of those answers from our guests. Thank you so much, Emmanuel. We'll go through to Megan's presentation. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to this morning's uh, webinar. It's really nice to be able to share with you today. Um, I'm going to actually start by sharing my screen. And just to tell you today, I'm going to really share more information regarding you know, what is the role of nutrition when it comes to, to stoma care. And I think it's a very big topic. And from a time perspective, I'm going to keep it short, but hopefully um, get the opportunity to share some information that, that you'd find useful um, going forward. Of course, what I do want to just mention is that this can't take the place of whatever um, care you're getting from your healthcare professional. So, so their care will definitely supersede because it's individualized for you. But a lot of, you know, maybe symptoms that you're experiencing, um, you know, food that you're eating or not sure of, those would be quite similar overall. So I would like to just take you through some of the things that we have seen to be you know, common with, with people that, ha that have an, uh, a stoma. So firstly, the main um, aim of dietary management is firstly to prevent any type of blockages after surgery and to promote healing of, of the stoma wound. The one fact that I'm going to, or one point rather, that I'm going to focus on is really what you're going to look at after surgery, and then not only promoting healing, but really looking at some of those um, problems that we can experience with a, an, a, a, a stoma, and that would be something like flatulence or diarrhea, constipation, um, certain odors, and how you can really, when you actually start experiencing those, immediately can make a change to what you're currently doing in your diet, uh, and that can help to reduce these types of unwanted symptoms. So post-surgery, firstly, I think it's, it is always an important thing to mention, is that post-operatively, um, we need to know 
that a high energy, high protein diet is very important. So don't be nervous to start eating again. Remember by taking insufficient amounts of energy. So how can a person do that? Well, you firstly would look at something like regular eating. That would be very important right through anyway, just from a health perspective. But also it most likely would start out with some type of, you know, high protein supplement drink that you'd probably be taking in as well, just to increase your intake. And also we do look at um, a low fiber intake initially. So that can change depending on if you're experiencing any symptoms. And this information will be given to you post-surgery, but just to be, make you aware of what could potentially happen or if you haven't followed something like that, we, you might want to make some type of change. Now, in saying all of this, it is important that we know that we can't leave out food groups. We can reduce certain food groups and or certain foods um, and increase others, but by leaving out a food group, very often you can increase your risk for a nutritional deficiency. In other words, a deficiency in terms of um, something like vitamins, minerals, um, certain fats that are important to the body or essential to the body, as well as protein. When you are eating and you start having solid foods, just be careful of eating too fast. So chew your food thoroughly. This is something that we should all be doing anyway, but over here it can help as well because the digestion actually starts in the mouth. By having small regular meals, that also assists because the moment you don't eat for a long period of time, your bowels do become empty. And when they do, they produce gas. And this can also make you feel nauseous. So not only do you then experience, experience nausea, you might actually experience a little bit of, of gas, you know, in your, your uh, stoma bag and your ostomy bag rather, and you don't want that. So that's why you want to have the regular small meals throughout the day. When we start introducing foods, it's a good idea to reduce, uh, introduce one food uh, at a time, one new food yeah, at a time, because some of them might give us an undesirable symptom. And if we know which food we've introduced, and the best way to do that is by keeping a food journal. It's not going to be forever. Once you've actually introduced the foods, you're going to get to know your body. And remember, over time as well, the body can adapt. So if you introduce a new food now, and it is a favorite, and you are experiencing something like um, a gas buildup, um, a flatulence, etc., then don't think that you can never have that food again. You can reintroduce it later as well. So this is the good news. It's a good idea to keep an eye on what's happening initially, highlight that food, what your effect is, and then later, you know, two or three or four weeks later, try it again and see if you have the same symptoms or experiencing the same symptoms. Now, the nutritional requirements um, will obviously vary from, from one person to the, uh, the other, of course, but also is only based on the bowel which you have that is remaining. So I, in this instance, in today's presentation, I'm not going to be able to go to, into, through each different type of um, ostomy, but I am going to highlight some of the, the symptoms and, and, and what we can do about it, or undesirable symptoms. Lactose intolerance, I'm going to say right up front, is um, often a, a very common side effect. And lactose is found particularly in dairy products. So you have an option. Dairy is important because you need calcium. And one thing that you can do is you can use a dairy alternative. Just check that they've added calcium in. You also need protein, and dairy also gives you that. Uh, you can choose a lactose-free milk, for example, or you can then go the, uh, an alternative route where you, you can get something like soya milk or almond milk, just ensure that you have got calcium added into those milks. And hydration. Now, once again, don't become dehydrated. Sometimes, depending on where your bag is, there tends to be more output into the bag uh, in terms of, of fluids but you do need to stay hydrated as well. So just like before you actually um, got the, the, the stoma, you do need to continue having enough fluids.
In terms of the digestive pro, uh, process, we do get different types of stomas. So you've got your colostomy, your ileostomy, and your ostomy. And those have a different subtypes, but today, um, for today's purposes, I'm not going to go into those in more detail. The, the type of ostomy is surgery you have will affect your ability to absorb certain nutrients. And so wherever it is on the digestive system, so wherever it actually falls, whichever colon it is, for example, ascending or transverse or descending, um, if it is, you know, all, all these different uh, points of, of the stoma are going to potentially have different effects on how you manage it. But overall, these changes for, for many people are actually just temporary. But for some, it's permanent. So no matter which one you want it to be an experience where you can actually reduce any symptoms that are uh, not going to serve you. So nutrients, fluid intake, electrolytes are very, very, very important. And they can actually also affect the consistency of your stool. And I think this is something that comes up time and again, depending on, on the bag that you have. I thought I'd actually highlight some points here. The food chart of common food, which may cause intolerance. So it has been structured in a really nice way. And I will, this, this will be available to you. So there's, it's no need for you to, to scribble it down at all at any time. We can definitely make it available. It does help you when you're experiencing some of these symptoms. So for example, if there's an obstruction in the stoma, there are certain foods, particularly peels or pips or seeds. Can you see a popcorn? The seed, the skin and the seeds, particularly nuts are another one that happens to um, corn or kernels very much goes together with your popcorn. These are typical of foods that potentially can cause an obstruction. So if you aren't keeping a journal, what's quite nice and you're experiencing a symptom like this, you can go back to your journal and go, ah, that's what happened. I had quite a bit of dried fruit yesterday, and that's why I'm experiencing this. And immediately you can then say, right, I'm going to move away from that. It's not actually something that is, um, it's causing an intolerance. So I can leave that food out. So odors happen very often as well. And certain foods tend to have an odor of themselves, of all, of themselves, you know, without even looking at, um, you know, the odor, the odor that they produce. In the body. Some of your, your typical ones, as we know and, and are aware of, is broccoli and cabbage, your fish, garlic and onions. I think you can really pick up some of those that are more typical. And we know that our legumes, like our baked beans and our lentils and all those, are very typical and uh, gassy um, uh, you know, plant foods. So we want to perhaps reduce those if they are a problem. In terms of the loose stool or diarrhea, I think you know what, what we also must be careful of here is the moment you've got diarrhea, you want to reduce your fluid intake. Don't do that. You must stay hydrated. But hydration, very often with a with a lot of loose diarrhea, is you would look at ensuring an adequate intake of electrolytes. So depending on what your doctor or dietitian says, you might want to take in an electrolyte, you know, drink as well. Just remember, we're not talking necessarily sports drinks here. We're just talking electrolytes. So that would be things like your sodium and your potassium, et cetera. Um, and that's why we want to take in uh, some fruit and vegetables because they contain these electrolytes. When there we have an increase in diarrhea, you can see that the typical ones, of course, alcohol is one that, that tends to cause quite a bit of diarrhea. But your plant foods in particular, besides, of course, your lactose that we get from just the normal milk, tend to be the culprits when it comes to diarrhea. So over here, you have to be very aware. So when it comes to your fruits and you are experiencing you know, diarrhea, do move away from peels and skins, um, you know, reduce it. You do, we do have some help. I'm going to indicate that to you as well. So it's not just staying away from foods. There are some foods that can actually help to reduce this problem, these problems as well. Gas producing um, foods, alcohol, once again, I want you just to notice how that stands out. And you can just think of gas 
think of any foods that are once again gassy even before they arrive in the body and you'll be immediately look at your, your beans, um, soya, cabbage like we have already uh, with your odor producing type of uh, foods. If you're chewing gum, you swallow a lot of air by chewing gum. Another really important point is if you drink through a straw quite often and you're experiencing gas, it actually might be that. So that's another thing that, that you can move away from. And then your carbonated drinks, be it your sparkling water, or any type of cold drinks, um, artificial sweeteners very often can also be gas uh, producing. Uh, so a person must be very aware of those. And these ones, when you're experiencing these symptoms, again, go back to your, your actual food journal, see if you ate any of those, remove them, perhaps remove the others at that specific time, get alleviation of the symptom you're experiencing, and then again, you can put one food back at a time. So it might seem like a laborious path to follow, but let me recommend that if there's a food that falls under one of these categories that you're incredibly fond of and you're experiencing one of these symptoms, I'm going to give an example. So you're um, producing quite a bit of gas, but you like cauliflower. What you would do is you would leave out those foods and then after, a when your gas as you know, you, you've been alleviated and you're not having any problems with it again, then introduce cauliflower first, because this is a food that's a favorite to you. In that way, you immediately going to see the body is now starting to tolerate it. It's not causing gas. Of course, most of these problems are also related to quantity. That's why it's a really good idea to eat small, regular meals throughout the day. So here on the flip side are foods that can actually help to alleviate intolerance. The good news is, is if you are experiencing any of these symptoms, things like constipation, or you know, once again, how do you control odor, or a loose stool, or how do you reduce um, the flatulence, or any type of color changes uh, as well, if that's a concern to you, then you'd be able to pick up that these are some foods that can assist. So I'm not going to go through every food specifically here, but just to highlight some of them. The moment we also change the temperature of our beverages, never too hot. That's not a uh, not beneficial, but think something like coffee, for example, cooked fruits and vegetables, even fresh fruit juices. Uh, and of course, then looking at if, it, if a need arises and the doctor has prescribed a laxative, you can use that. When you are constipated, can I recommend that before you start any of those, you first look at your hydration, because hydration immediately can assist if you are dehydrated and you then start drinking sufficient amounts of fluid, it actually immediately will help to alleviate constipation. So that should be your first uh, port of call, if I can call it that, before you go and look at any of the other foods. Odor control, this is something that also helps to reduce odors, and that's good to know. Your um, peppermint oil, we can obviously also use it you know, externally, but don't just put it uh, you know, onto the body. Uh, a person needs to be aware that these are very, very strong. But if you're adding it into something that you're eating, your actual um, your edible peppermint oils, then that would be a good option as well. Loose stool control. Now, if I had to look at the symptoms that people experience, this one would probably be the one that many people um, do experience at some time or another. So it's a good list to keep um, you know, a, a, an eye on when you need it. All the way from different types of, of, of fruits down to your grains, for example, even your peanut butter, you'll see. And then sweets can also help, but only small amounts. The moment you're having large quantities, particularly of things like jelly babies, they can also increase diarrhea. So please be aware that, you know, once again, small amounts at one time can help to alleviate symptoms. But if you're taking in a large quantity, it might actually have undesirable effects. Reducing flatulence, yeah, there's a whole list of things that you can try as well. And of course, color changes. In saying all of this, a person needs to take into consideration, if you are um, 
aware of anything else like you might be a diabetic as well as have a stoma bag, please always speak to your healthcare professional as well, because certain of these you would not necessarily want to have in larger quantities because it might actually affect something like your blood sugar control. So be aware of that. But it is a very helpful um, list in terms of alleviating intolerances. Then our urostomy or our bladder surgeries, for example, they uh, we do see over here that the urine pH, um, which we know pH is basically looking, and I've just put at the bottom here, how alkalinic or how acidic, you know, our, our fluid is. And when the food we eat is basically used in the body, it yields a mineral residue, and this we call ash. So when certain foods are digested and broken down, they produce a more acidic ash, where other foods produce a more alkaline ash. So this is quite common. And we know at this point that fruit and vegetables tend to give a more alkaline ash, where meat, basically your protein foods, um, that will also incorporate something like your dairies and your cereals would be like your grains, are tending towards a more acidic ash. And we know that that will have an effect on alkalinity or acidity. So here is a very uh, you know, more comprehensive list of foods that tend to affect alkalinity and acidity. So if you have a bag and your urine is quite acidic, then going through this list, looking at your food journal, you might pick up that you're having perhaps larger quantities of these foods. And in doing that, what you need to do is just reduce slightly your quantity of these and increase your quantity of these. And I am going to say that it's more typical that we get an acidic type of response than an alkaline, but it is important to know that they, they are um, sometimes a more alkaline response as well. The, the, the neutral foods, these foods don't affect um, the alkalinity or the acidity, and therefore by actually consuming them, you should not have you know, an increase uh, in, in, for example, acidity. So that's good to keep in mind as well. So when we're looking at our stoma care, we know that people with ostomies can have many different foods with few restrictions. So it's not that everything that I mentioned here is all about restrictions. It's about managing the symptoms, you know, following a good, healthy, balanced diet with small, regular meals, staying hydrated, making sure you're getting all your food groups and your nutrients. So each food group provides a combination of different nutrients, as you might know. And it is also recommended that you follow up on all the fluid and dietary restrictions set out by your healthcare professional. And, some, and those are usually um, for a period of time, and then you would reintroduce many of those restrictions, unless there was something like an allergy. So at that point, I hope I've given you a little bit of information that will be you'll find useful. And if you haven't started with a food diary yet, can I recommend that that's the one step you take towards helping with any type of symptoms you might experience? And the next is to make sure that you are taking in a higher energy, higher protein diet, and your small regular meals throughout the day. I hope that was helpful, and I want to say thank you very much. Thank you so much, Megan. Um, I'll thank you in an email and WhatsApp soon, but thank you so much for being here and sharing. Wow, that is a lot of information. And I think, again, just another dynamic of a summer patient's life that has such a, an, a crazy impact um, on your day-to-day -day living. So don't worry, all of these presentations will be available um, soon on Cancer's website, as well as this whole webinar will be recorded and available on Cancer's website, www.cancer.org.za, because I know maybe a lot of you would like to watch some of this again, take some more notes down, but I think one of the most important things is keep that food diary and get to know what your body likes and doesn't like so that you can feel more comfortable and happier. So thank you so much, Megan, for that.
um, last but definitely not least is our fantastic sister Adele Berger. She completed her nursing diploma in 1998 and has a degree in occupational health. She also did her basic trauma and ambulance course in 2001 and in 2021 has just completed her dispensing license and she is our head of wellness and our stoma program at cancer and a fantastic part of our team. Adele has many years of experience and is passionate about stoma um, and the patient journey. So I hand you over to my wonderful colleague, Adele. Oh, yes, it is World Ostomy Day and thank you for joining us today. We really do appreciate everyone joining in and listening to this webinar. And um, I'm really excited about all the speakers that's been on this morning. And I'm basically here to say cancer is here with your ostomy journey. We would like to support you. Your everyday life is impacted as no one can imagine. So here at Cancer, we do um, understand your journey or try to understand as far as possible. So we care and we would like to take your hand, especially in those darker days when you feel, oh, today I'm struggling with this skin irritation or this product just don't want to stick what can i do so this is where we come in and say listen we're here for you next slide and um, the organization has number as, as numerous care centers nationally we have two larger stomach clinics that are available um, for your convenience um, our friendly staff is just waiting for your call and they will definitely assist. They're passionate about stoma and um, all our ostomy awareness as well. So please um, give them a call. But unfortunately, living in Africa or South Africa, um, not all people have the means to travel to our, cl to our clinic, um, which is situated in Pretoria and then also another larger one in, in Cape Town. So for them, we have said uh, we need to do something for these patients. So what can we do? Therefore, Cancer started a new initiative to support our ostomates virtually. So how did we manage to do this? So we started with Connect with Care, our Tally Stoma Support. So what we've said now is, um, okay, let's see how we can assist our stoma patients. So here's just an, a, a small, like an advert that we made available for you with our contact details on our help desk as well. And then we're going to offer you that telephonic consultation, either by WhatsApp call, a WhatsApp video call, a Zoom session or whatever means are available to you. Next slide. So what is the advantages of being part of the cancer stoma family? So with cancer, we will offer an ostomy care service to all South Africans by means of this virtual service. So cancer will be offering the expertise of eight elite stoma therapists to assist us with your needs. So basically, virtually, you, you cannot attend one of our stoma clinics or you can't come, so virtually they will be there for you. Once appointment has been scheduled, um, you will receive um, a notification. Your stomach therapist will then give you a call and then explain to you what's going to happen. They're going to see how they can assist you. This is especially for those far off places, um, farms, the Kuru, Northern Cape, those places where you can't really get to a stomach clinic or get in touch with the stoma therapist because we all know stoma therapists are not um, readily available in all towns. So we now said we can't just leave uh, our ostomates out there with any help or any any means of getting products and getting the right fit so we will see how we can assist please remember that this can't replace that important consultation with the stoma therapist though or the stoma nurse um, but we are there to help your next slide So cancer offers counseling and also support services for people with and their families living with stoma. Remember, we do have a study counseling line as well, just for normal counseling sessions. And we've got our study stoma support line, which is for our virtual line. So we stock all stoma brands. So basically all suppliers. Um, it, it, we are a supplier that which is biased. So we will definitely help you and see what product fits your body best. So um, it's a door-to-door -door lead delivery. So if you need your, your stoma products, you're more than welcome to phone our um, cancer offices and find out how to go about. 
cancer do we we do claim um, claim from medical aid um so you can discuss that with our stoma staff working in our region so like i said we've got our two larger stoma clinics where there's excellent excellent stoma nurses um, assisting like for example sister monica that's on our webinar today she's been assisting us in our at cape town branch for many years now and yeah thank you sister monica for your assistance and helping our stoma Waiters um, out there and to assist them with their problems and needs. So actually, this is something in short. I would like to thank everyone for actually joining today and making the time to be here. And please, if you do have any questions, um, any problems, or you would like to make an appointment, you're more than welcome uh, to contact us and do that. So as part of our 90th anniversary, Cancer was fortunate to be one of the selected NGOs to receive donations to must stop to assist those in need. So we, we are able to help 90 patients with financial constraints and without medical aid. So we urge you from, to please write to us, tell us your story, and let's see if you can be one of the selected ones that can qualify and so that we can assist you. We would like to thank our um, suppliers that assisted in this actual 90th celebration and giving their stock to us and say listen give it to those that's in need and obviously we will make sure that the perfect fit suits that stoma wearer thanks a lot thank you for the opportunity and cora over to you thank you so much wow i think that is really something i think you know when, when people ask cancer you know about the impact of COVID 19 and what did we do as an organization um in order to try and still be there for patients with all of the restrictions um the birth of the stoma uh, serve the tele stoma service was was born in that last year and i think we are so proud of it i think adele thank you so much for spearheading that for us as an organization and we know that it has benefited so many patients i think as long as we can see the stoma that's why um, adele mentioned a video a zoom as long as we can see it and we can assist you our nurses are really waiting to help and we know there are many challenges but at least we can do our best to support you um, as, as best we can. It's also Kansas 90th birthday. We've actually just turned 90 in August, if you didn't know. So yes, we are very old. Um, so, so as part of our celebrations, we are encouraging patients to share their stories. My colleague Lucy will put an, a link. Um, you'll see that right now, just popped up. Stories of hope. We would love to know your story. We would love to share um, um, what, what you've gone through and would love you also to take a moment to actually celebrate um, your journey and where you are today. So if you are comfortable, please follow the, follow the link, um, put in the information and share with us and would love to actually put you on our website and let other stoma patients and cancer patients actually be inspired by what you've gone through, what you've conquered and where you are today. So then from our side of cancer, thank you so much for your time today. Thank you so much to our fantastic speakers who took the time. And we really hope that you will, um, that you learn something today, that you feel a little bit more confident and that there's just an all around sense of positivity that people that are living with ostomies can have a happy, productive and normal life. There's a lot of support for you and you do not have to do this alone. So yeah, thank you so much everyone for joining us today. We are incredibly grateful. Have a safe weekend and take care. Thank you, Emmanuel. We're gonna go out with one of our videos um, just to inspire you a little bit more. Take care. He said, yes, it's cancer. And immediately it's like everything, everything just got knocked out of me. All those plans that you had for tomorrow and the next day, all of a sudden, I meant nothing. I woke up after surgery, and there's this plastic bag hanging down my side, and I'm like, oh, so this is what they mean. At that point, I still never really fully realized what it was. People get the diagnosis of either cancer or bowel problems. Then the doctor says you are going to have a bag. The information is so much they don't understand what the doctor is saying. What was very important for me was the constant communication with Sister Monica and the ladies at the Stoma Clinic. It's a wonderful clinic, the cancer clinic.
all private patients that have gotten insurance or medical aid can get stock here. And any patient with a problem can come in and say, please, will you help me? I've got a problem with my stoma. So I sit with the patient, I make drawings, I show pictures. I started leveraging off what she's done with other people. We looked at options and alternatives and how can we get around this? He decided it's a permanent colostomy, I have to live with it and I'm going to make the best. I was still in hospital when someone said to me, do you want to go and run the Chicago Marathon as a cancer survivor? And it was to raise funds for a pediatric oncology hospital being built in Palestine. And I got told, oh, by the way, it's not next year, it's this year. <laughs> and at that point, the furthest I ran was this 12 kilometer run walk pushing a wheelchair. I started getting more active and then sweat and this bag starts falling off and you can't get the damn bag to clip back on. you got that frustration. Now there's leaks. Leakage is a big thing. And then smell is a big thing. Often we can't control noise in a bag, but we can control odor. These days there are so many excellent bags on the market. I know of people, they've got this, and for them, their life is over. And I'm like, it doesn't have to be over. My life just began. So the stone was sent him in a different direction with his life. The stoma itself has given me the go when people said, your life's over, it's embarrassing. And it's like, no, it's not embarrassing, it's not over. It saved my life. I'm thankful for it.